Welcome to the worst nightmare of all. Reality. Explore the lesser known stories of our unknown world. Join the pursuit of the paranormal with Ash and Greg. Hey, how you doing? Hey, yes, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, impromptu uh, live, yeah. Let's go for it. We had some plans that fell through, so why not just jump on Facebook, have a chat, see see what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, how's it how's it been going this week? Not too bad, not too bad. Been quite a bit of stuff going on this week. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, yesterday definitely. we had the Mars, the Mars rover. Yeah. Up and down. Yeah, that... <clears throat> That um oh yeah there's sorry about that I had a slight uh, echo come through in my earpiece there <laughs> yeah so the um the Mars Perseverance um rover landed down touched down on Mars <clears throat> and already I've seen uh, conspiracy theories about it. About the, the yeah, Never takes long. <laughs> so the um, the camera that they used as part of the landing, like as they landed, was just a, like a camera that was covered in dust and and all sorts. And people were saying, "Well, why why have you gone to Mars with all this technology and you've got this like crappy little non HD camera? <clears throat> uh, it's all it's all fake." <clears throat> so I've seen that already. It didn't take long. <laughs> As you say, uh, the no, thing no, literally no. just touched down. <clears throat> I'm surprised they've even said it's there. But yeah, yeah so I, I did see though, from a technology point of view, it's gone from 12,000 miles an hour to two miles an hour before it landed. So it's quite, that was quite <laughs> an impressive feat. Yeah, and the parachutes, are, it's an English parachute that they used. Oh, is it? But one of the other um, conspiracies about it being rubbish is um the fact that there's no atmosphere on that so how did they use a parachute <laughs> that's not even a conspiracy <laughs> i don't know so people say we didn't go because they, they couldn't use a parachute because there's no no atmosphere so there's no air for it to even open a parachute things traveling at twelve thousand miles an oh, hour yeah not air of velocity <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah it doesn't take long for the uh there we go. That was one of the first images. Um, and people were saying this is awful. It was covered in dust, to be fair. So I don't know what uh, what people were talking about at that point. Yeah. And we get some obviously get some good stuff coming as they set up the proper equipment and the helicopter that they've got and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if... Um, yeah, they're saying why? Why have you not got decent cameras? They've got four K cameras in there anyway, so um, they've just got to unload them, I suppose, once they do all the the testing. So we should get some decent uh, decent photographs and footage soon. But, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, we'll see. But that's it. There, big, it's isn't it? Very, I realize it's so yeah. big. But actually, quite small as well. It is big. But for some reason, in my head, I was thinking it was going to be a lot bigger, but it's not. I thought it would be small. It was just very pitch like a roll. You think like a little like a remote control, like mm. like how was he? This human sort like of one of those bomb disposal things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think I don't, they're going to take um, samples of the the Mars surface and and send it back. I think. Yeah, it's going to take about 10 years I mean, before we actually get the... Obviously, they can analyse, because it's got a lab on board as well, hasn't it? Yeah, I think uh, so. But, but the actual stuff they bring back in 2031, I think they said bye. Yeah. So I they can analyse it on the actual rover as well. I'm hoping that um, 
they might spot some of these moon and Mars bases that we've been talking about on the recent podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows indeed? It's uh will we be shown anything if we um if they do spot anything, the camera feed will go and all that kind of stuff on it. Yeah. Like that happens with the uh, the space station space. feed. Oh yeah, yeah. That happens it, all it the cuts time. Cuts off and then like <laughs> something happens and the screen just like I haven't technical issues <laughs> after there's been some weird light or something seen on the uh, ISS yeah, yeah. feed. Yeah, so who knows? Good evening, Simon. Hello, Simon. Can't wait for the drones to fly. Definitely. It flows like a minute at a time or something, doesn't it? Uh, it flows. Flies for like a minute at a time, like position to position. Okay. I think mean, you can travel, like, I think it's 95 meters or something at a time. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, the little helicopter thingy with Bobby. Yeah. That's with him. So they're, they're just like proper little quadcopter things or... I think so. I don't know. I'm sort of demonstrating it. Um, <clears throat> so, but yeah, it does. Like, yeah, I think it's about. I think no, ninety seconds. I think it might be. This yeah. little drone can like fly from position to position. Mm. So it was the uh, first time we've had a aircraft on Mars. Well, well, allegedly that we know about. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seeing the drone for how they can use the drone from Earth as well. What a, what a feat of technology, regardless of what everybody thinks about the fact that oh, should we be spending all this money studying another planet when we've got issues on this country, uh, on this this planet. The fact that they can control an aircraft on another planet that says something about the technology. Yeah, definitely. So, like so, you say, people will uh, deny. Yeah, you know, it's a desert in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, they'll overlay the deserts, pictures, and all the dunes. I've seen, I've seen them do that for the uh, ones on Mars. Uh, Mars, what about Mars? On Moon, that's so why they they superimpose stuff from some of the Nevada desert over yeah. the Moon pictures. It's absolutely bonkers. <clears throat> Fourteen minutes for the information to get there. That's mad. It's really mad. So it's probably about as good as my uh, my drone I used to have. It used to take fourteen minutes before I could get any kind of control <laughs> control over it. <laughs> like I say, the technology is just incredible. Yeah, it is, and I think because um, the, there are multiple countries over Mars at the moment, aren't they? With yeah, it's like a bit of like a rush <laughs> at the uh -huh. minute to uh, well, the UAE, I think, they That's came it. like the eighth, it's the fourth or the eighth country to have like something on on Mars. And they, they got there last week. Like they're trying to find something before each other. Yeah, so that's that's actually really good that there's um some kind of competition because for so long it's just been NASA going up there controlling what we see and and now we've got all these different governments racing to get up there. Um, it'll be interesting to see if development moves quicker now because they're being forced to... Yeah, like to the action. original space race. Mm. It's like, we're going to beat Russia. And they yeah. did. They just did all they could, they could to get there as fast as they could. And it worked. I was like, yeah. oh, some people don't believe it did, but did they go to the moon? <laughs> did they? <laughs> we did. <laughs> why haven't we gone back? Why, why have we not gone back then? We don't need to go back. I don't think there's no the money in the cost. No, we don't need. We know. I think there's anything we can find on there that. Whereas Mars is, there's still a lot to find out about Mars. Whereas the Moon, yeah. Unless we start setting up colonies or like a like an intermediary on the way to Mars, then. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it could be sort of a launch, a further a first launch pad onto Mars from from Earth, I suppose. But that, yeah, I don't think there's anything of of use on the Moon really. And not for the well, rather spend the money going to Mars mm -hmm. and trying and to I get think, us to Mars. And they can do it quite quickly when it's when it's in the right orbit of Earth or when they're on both the same orbit. Um it was what seven seven months, I want to say seven months, or was it five months? Um 
I thought it was nine. It's the, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Could be a bit less. I know when they do the, uh, they're doing the like the, the uh, astronaut training for it. That's going to go isolation parts. I'm sure yeah. that's for like nine months to see how they okay sort of cope with it all. Cope with doing it for nine months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, you can't come back. So. Yeah. No. Well, at the minute, we don't know how to get them back. Yeah. So we you, we need to have a base really on the moon. Yeah, I suppose it it's it'd make life easier if there was a base on the moon. And we that would be the shuttle to the point, and we'll go from there. But yeah, definitely. Um, as far as what they're trying to find on Mars is evidence of ancient life and yeah. any microbial life that um, is possibly on there or used to be on there. Yeah, and that ties into the other news that was this week, uh, which was the weird life found in antarctica that shouldn't be there yeah so this is a, a strange one as well <clears throat> so it just shows that life does persevere as it were it finds, um, a, way. It finds a way they they find life at the the vents and the volcanoes at the bottom of the ocean and now now this um yeah, very strange. Um, and I suppose this is more like the life that they'd find on some of the uh, moons around our planets in this this solar system. Yeah, I think, is it Europa or Titan? Europa, yeah, Europa. There's another one that they think it could be this stuff. Yeah, I think they, they were saying Europa, that's where they want to send uh, probes to and sort of melt through the ice because they, they believe that there's water under the ice uh, and if there is this kind of find this week suggests that it's possible we would find life out there you've seen that film um oh, what's it called it's about when they go to europa um the europa project i think it's called no I've not um, seen that. it's like a it's like a horror i think it's supposed to be a horror um <laughs> basically they send a team out to europa to find out what's on there and there's like some big scary creatures under the ice okay killing half the or most or might kill all the crew i can't remember now but it kills most or if not all yeah the crew there's one there's one one you open think like there's no one there yeah so they go out with like the wreckies or whatever out the little spaceship yeah and like you've gone missing or the then try and find the missing crew and hear noises and see this creature and find stuff it's 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 not a good film. It's it's a fun <laughs> film. Okay, no, I'll have to have a have a check on that because I um not heard of that at all. I think was you you seen that one that's on Netflix with George Clooney? That's quite recent. No, I think, again, that, I think that's rubbish. from Europa. Mm-hmm. See, Europa or another? Okay, one, one of Jupiter's moons, and that's yeah, and they're coming back to Earth from like being out on the moon. But when they come back to Earth, basically Earth's been a apocalyptic event on Earth, and they don't know about it. Uh, okay. So George Clooney's on Earth, trying to like, survive because he's a scientist in one of the uh, observatories. Yeah. And so half the film's George Clooney trying to survive on post point, but you don't know what's happened. They don't tell you what's actually happened to destroy the Earth. And then the other half of the film's the crew that are coming back from one of Jupiter's moons, and they don't know that the Earth's been destroyed. Yeah. Oh, the Earth's not destroyed, but the Earth's fucked, basically. And they don't realise. They're obviously trying to get back to Earth, and they, as they get closer, they can't communicate with Earth, and they don't know why, and, and stuff. And, um, and George Clooney's trying to get a signal to tell him, basically, not to come, because oh, okay. Like, like, okay. There's, there's nothing to come back to. That's like what he's trying to, trying to do. Because it's like all the, other bit, all the other ships that have been out, like, he hasn't got contact with, but he, this one yeah. ship was still like out there. And he's trying okay. to get in touch with him to say, don't come back. I'll have to. Uh, it's kind of. I can't remember what it's called. It's on, it's on Netflix. It's quite recent, anyway. There's a few good ones. Um, well, oh, <laughs> I say that and I can't even think of it. Um, uh, Event Horizon, very similar thing where they go up in space and um, pre record a, or at this, they see a sound bite of a, of a hard drive of a, a voicemail or a voice clip and they can't make it 
uh, make it out as to what he's saying and then uh, sort of all this horror unleashes over the course of the film uh, and then they decrypt the message at the end basically saying don't don't come and help us <laughs> and it's okay. too late i'm not seeing that one that's quite good it's quite an old one i think um uh, Lawrence Fishburne's in it. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. It's one of those cool classic horror space ones. But... I think my favourite one is Contact. Uh, I think, is it Jodie Foster? No, it's not Jodie Foster. No, it's, it's um, the other woman from... Um... Amy. Oh, is Amy? I'll tell you it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Amy Adams. I'm sure it's Amy Adams. No, it's not Amy Adams. No, um, I can't remember. Wait, I'll tell you. Let's go and have a look. Laura. Okay, Judy Foster. <clears throat> yeah, it's right. Judy Foster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. Put me off without saying it. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Judy Foster. And, uh, oh, it's and Arrival. Probably. Arrival is Amy Adams, isn't it? And that's about like a contact with extraterrestrials. But... Yeah, I like contact. It's quite old, um, mm-hmm. and that's uh, quite. I like the ending to that, and about the the future of humanity and all that stuff. And it's quite a few plot holes in it, but it's <laughs> oh, I can't even love this type of film. It's uh... yeah, they all tend to have a few, don't they? <clears throat> have you seen Interstellar? Yes, that's uh, that's one quite of my like, favourite like space one. films, and. Uh, the Martian, no, yeah, like the Martian, yeah, yeah, because the I suppose the Martian is more like what might happen if uh SpaceX gets to Mars, yeah, and then it all, all goes tits up, but no, it's good. So, back to this life stuff, it does beg a question as to despite the fact that there's lots of harsh environments, um, on all these different planets in the solar system and beyond do we think that there'll be life found on those planets bearing in mind we find it in weird places on the earth yeah i think like you, you always go back to the, like where there's water there's life and for everything that we know as humans have ever discovered that water is what every every creature's ever like always needed yeah and they this obviously this is a an old ancient lake where they've sent this mars rover Mm-hmm. Um, so that obviously there was water, possibly still ice at the uh, the polar caps. Mm-hmm. So I think there's high chance of uh, definitely. Like, even with like, I think it has like two percent the atmosphere of Earth or something on Mars. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, say things can survive anywhere. Like that tardy gras bug. Yeah, can like pretty much oh, yeah. survive anything. <clears throat> and this that can survive for thousands of years. And stuff like yeah. that, some ra- random like that. I think there's definitely a good chance of. Obviously, we want to find um, some proper Martians. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think um, we'll be shown those. If we find uh, some underground uh, <clears throat> base, even if yeah. it's like long gone, uh, to still find evidence that there was a. Civilization. I think, like I say, with, with there being no, like, not much atmosphere and mm. uh, out on the surface, they, if there was life, it could have developed underground rather than yeah. on yeah. the ground. Okay, then. So, based on the conversation we had on the podcast on Tuesday with Ben, do you think there are Mars bases already? I think it, no, but it's like one of them. It's like it's fantastical isn't it to to think about yeah. that um yeah well like like say if you find like, an old like base from thousands of years ago but they still got the the ruins of it i guess somewhere mm-hmm. um i think for, for people like us that are into into that and have a belief that there are things coming to this planet in terms of ufos and yeah you know, that's extraterrestrial or not i think it's the i don't know probably the 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 mecca i think if anything like that was found mm-hmm. so it's always like i don't think there will be anything but there's always that little bit of 
glow hope. of hope that there is something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is something there. <clears throat> but like you say, it, it it's more likely, I suppose, that it was something that had happened uh, and did happen a long time ago. So not actually current. Um, so that begs the question then: that where are UFOs that we're seeing now? Where are they coming from? Where do you think you're the you're the UFO man? The, the more I've looked into it, and with other aspects of paranormal, and the more I've spoke to people who've been like studying this for decades, yeah, I have been sort of going down the path of it's interdimensional. Okay, and I think that's the because the with with anything coming from from outer space or from a different planet, the distances it's either obviously technology that they can just appear and reappear, possibly mm-hmm. through wormholes or bending time space yeah but in terms of, i think of and i've been going down the route of it being in, more interdimensional is for me the most likely explanation and that explains a lot of other paranormal mm-hmm. stuff that happens like in terms of yeah. big foot um all sorts of big um paranormal stuff and also the like with when look at the tic tac videos and stuff like this yeah i've been looking a lot more into that the actual like it's not a craft it, it's an actual living thing okay so the actual thing they're seeing the actual objects are conscious life okay so we're seeing that is the actual alien is what's been seen so are we conscious s- yeah are we thing. seeing what they want us to see so is that actually what it looks like or I think, that, yeah yeah i think with, with the human brain what the human brain does is it, it sh- if it doesn't understand something, it fills in the gaps. Yeah. So yeah. that's probably like the most logical thing that the brain tries to obviously yeah. at, try and process it and then mm-hmm. show us that something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. It, yeah, it, it it almost goes to something it thinks it's seen before. I suppose if it. Yeah, it tries to make sense of it, and then yeah. Because the brain processes what it is and then mm. shows us what it is. But if that if the brain can't analyze or comprehend what it's seeing, yeah, then it will show us what it thinks yeah. it is or what we it fills in the gaps. Yeah. I mean, that explains yeah. quite a lot of paranormal things where people see weird things is because the brain hasn't got a function to show what it's seeing. Mm-hmm. So it's showing us either the closest possible thing to it or yeah. filling it up with something that it thinks we want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Uh, Simon says there's got there has to be life on other planets. We are living proof. Well, definitely. If it happen, if it can happen once. So what what's what would be more scary? The fact that there is life on other planets, or that there isn't. Because if there isn't, that poses an even bigger question. I think as to how the hell did we how did we get to to be this unique? If there is literally nobody else out there. But I, I completely agree. I think there has to be life out there, and I agree with you, Simon, and you, Ash. Yeah. Just the phenomenal number of planets, stars, all that kind of thing, it, I can't see how there couldn't be. And it's the Drake equation, I think, as well, isn't it? That's what it's called, that pinpoints it, that there has to be life out there. Yeah, but then, then the, the, uh, the other side is the Fermi paradox, where the fact that we haven't got the proof... Like it, it sort of proves that there is and there isn't at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that's yep. like where the power dots comes in is if there is, it should be teeming with life. Yeah. But it but we can't we've not found it, so it isn't what it should be. Go ahead. Yeah. It gets gets uh what's the word? Philo- philosophical with what you believe, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I I can't see how there can't be life out there. And if people are seeing all these other things in the sky, um, see on the, the live streams for NASA and from the, the space station where they cut the feeds, that kind of stuff. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. And there was a recent video clip. I, th- I think it was like a five second time lapse over the curvature of the Earth from um, space station that the Russian cosmonauts had showing there was like five mm. lights had had gone over there. They were uh, they were asking the question, what do what does everybody think this is? 
So I don't know. I don't know. I really do believe. So question from Trudy. So there is an astronaut that believes in aliens and thinks that humans are a aliens from millennia ago that came here, got stranded and helped to populate the earth. What are our views on this? So I do, so from what I've, I've looked into, that I think life didn't originate on earth. That's just my right. thought. We get hit by asteroids all the time. Whether or not we were seeded here by aliens as a project, that's that would suggest um, that obviously we've come from somewhere else. And the fact that we're seeing these UFOs, but they're not interacting with us. Could it be that we're an experiment where they, they don't want to interfere with us? Um, because if they interfere with us, then they're ruining an experiment. Like we wouldn't interact with experiments that we're doing on animals and such like and, and yeah. life forms. Um, <clears throat> Cause you, you um, contaminate uh, your experiments and your specimens. Um, and these people have been taken up and abducted. Are they being abducted, abducted, sorry. Or are they just being taken back up? to have tests run on them based Testing, on yeah. to see how their project's going. Just a thought. And they just pick randoms. That's why they don't pick. They don't seem to pick. Well, they do pick people from cities, as we found out on podcasts that we've done. Um, but they sort of pick randoms in the middle of nowhere. So there's less likelihood that they'll be seen, I suppose. Yeah, Charmaine says uh, we don't want humans to find them, which again sort of ties in with the it's, it's the zoo uh, <laughs> theory, isn't it? That the um, like they're observing us and like mm -hmm. we did to animals in the zoo, and yeah. like and the whole of human history, they could they could we don't know they could, just that could be a week to them that like equivalent mm -hmm. to their time where they have ways to think that because obviously time is a human construct anyway and, and it's it, yeah it's all relevant isn't it yeah i've it, that's another thing that i know we haven't spoken about on podcasts but it's something that again that i've thought about over the years is <clears throat> that it might take hundreds of thousands of years for these craft to get to us but if you think we our lifespan compared to say a butterfly on earth their their lives are very short the matter of days a dragonfly is like days yeah like if, if a week or so. like a day's yeah. worth of yeah. lifespan so we we live for say 100 years now a lot of people are and one day out of 100 years why is it inconceivable that an alien might live for 100,000 years 200,000 years of our time yeah. and it's only time that we've made up it's a day is just the fact that we've gone around gone around the sun once it's not it's not not around the sun but we've done a, a complete oh, um, um rotation a complete rotation yeah well that's changed as well i think that was uh they found we're going faster okay so they've cut off a couple of seconds out of a day or something because yeah i read Keep... something it's the earth's got to spin slightly very slightly faster um, Leonard's, but no, they interact with us. If they choose you, they will. Yeah. Um, there's some people, uh, you're quite right, Leonard. There's some people that have multiple interactions with creatures. It's like a life creatures. Mm. So that starts in childhood and keep coming yeah. back to. And again, mm -hmm. that ties in with the experiment, the, seeing how we're developing, how the body develops, yeah. and all that stuff. And you think we, we're doing a lot of that. There's TV programs on. Uh, some doctor, I can't think of his name, but they, they see these kids from like birth, then they revisit them three years later, then they're seven years, 15 years, or whatever. It's uh, uh, seven up, is it? Yeah, that's is it. That, yeah. 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 How's that any different to what these aliens are doing or these entities are doing to us? Yeah. Uh, here's one from uh, Andrea. Uh, uh, Andrea, sorry. Uh, what are your thoughts on the rhesus negative blood group theory? I think this okay. is the um, is it the very unique yeah. blood that only a few people, or is this, or is this one that goes back and it's linked to something like 
thousands of years ago, but there hasn't been any lineage. Yeah, I'm, it's not, just, I'm, not, I'm not sure on this one. Well, it's um, definitely uh, it's to do with it's a very rare blood type uh, for definite. Um, I don't know a great deal about it, but I know some. I'll just call up some info on that as well. It's just negative blood type. Um, Positive is the most common blood type. However, rhesus negative um, is is extremely rare. Um, just having a look now. <clears throat> I, I don't really. I don't. I don't, I don't oh, know. I have two different that. things. One's like where it's just very rare, mm -hmm. and then there's one where it's like someone thousands of years ago had it, and there's been like none. And then yeah. suddenly people have had this blood type, but there's been like no lineage linking them. So if anybody like, where does this blood type come from? Yeah, if anybody wants to uh, jump on and explain it to us, Andrea. feel free. <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> Think of all the light spectrums we can't see. So it's funny you should say that, Simon. So me and Ash, uh, and part of the paranormal type um, investigations and equipment that people use, uh, are where the infrared filter has been removed off the camera. So it allows the camera to go to a full spectrum so it can see ultraviolet and in infrared as well. Um, and we can't normally see that at all. So there are things that appear on the infrared spectrum, particularly, that uh, only seem to appear when filming in infrared. Um, and it, it goes down to microwaves and as well. Um, but yeah, there, there's quite possibly lots of stuff that we can't see. Um, really. like we, the visible light spectrum is like 0.01% mm -hmm. of the actual uh, what is there that we, we can't see. And I was uh, reading something where about its vibrations, it's on a vibration mm -hmm. level. Yep. Whereas yep. like different beings or different atoms on different vibrations. So we can't see them because they're on a different vibration level, but they can adjust their vibrations to make themselves visible. Mm -hmm. People on lower vibrations yep. or whatever, like that. That's another thing. With again, we can't see it, but they can see us, mm -hmm. and then they yep. can then choose to make themselves uh, visible to us. Uh, Ian, Ian and Ian. So we'll. Uh... Yeah, we're bar basically yeah we um we are barbaric as a species. It's yeah. There's always been war, as long as there's been humans. Um, yeah. Over whatever, it's always it's just always been fighting and killing and destroying. So I can understand why, yeah, like, yeah, that's not helping. They're just going to fuck themselves over. Yeah. We, we tend to, as a species, tend to attack things that we don't understand. So you're quite right, Ian. They, they might well have tried to give us some kind of education to move us forward, but... As a species, we're not fans of that. And you only have to go to some of these islands, these remote islands or remote forest um, civilizations that have never seen humans. And the first thing they do is try and attack. They don't They don't tend to try and embrace the fact that there's somebody that looks fairly similar that might help them. They, they, we see everybody's enemies, I think. Um, and I think religion hasn't helped with that uh, religion's biggest cause of war around so if some of this stuff goes against the religious beliefs of people then that tends to to cause friction i think it's like literally on the internet is like just sort of sums up how the human species are like we mm. literally have all of information available to us a click of a button you can find anything out i mean 20 years ago we had like in Carter on the PC trying to do some work on. Now you've, got, now you've got the whole of information that we've ever, everything we've ever known available, mm -hmm. but people spend the time calling each other names on Facebook. And looking at cat make, videos. Make, yeah, making memes. It's like, <laughs> can you imagine if everybody actually just used the information available mm -hmm. and put all, like, billions of people just put all the brains together and actually use the information that's available. Like, could do so much, but no, like I say, we, we spend time looking at pictures. Of, look, look at pictures of cats is cool. Fighting <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook and just it's just yeah, it's just crazy. Why 
how it just that's what people use it for when there's so much so much out there yeah uh, absolutely charmaine uh similar uh, contact finished our contact thousands of years ago but humans come too hostile yeah and i i they they do say that a lot of um ufos and unidentified craft are actually seen sort of over military bases over places where there are nuclear weapons um so yeah they they probably know that we're getting to a point where we're going to start doing ourselves too much harm um, and they're they're trying to intervene at that point but it's interesting because ufos have been seen for thousands of years the egyptians have seen them there's people who think that the pyramids um have got something to do with the um, ancient gods that come down in chariots of fire from the skies that kind of thing in biblical pictures and um lots of famous uh artwork from from over the last centuries there's always been depictions of things in the sky with like lights coming down and and such like so there it definitely looks like there's been some kind of interaction of some kind yeah but and going back to the the uh the blood type i mm. uh, got some information here from andrew and trudy so trudy says she is uh rhesus negative oh that's right yeah she is I um, that. so two theories <laughs> alien implantation or fallen angels um hold on oh this, oh, this one uh they don't know where our neck comes from that, and from what andrew's read most of the abductions are featuring our neck humans okay uh truly says that the it lacks the monkey factor therefore saying that basically can't have come from apes because they okay. haven't got this bit of i guess dna in the in that blood type. So where do you think it comes from, Trudy? Be interested to to see. Interesting though that um not having the rhesus monkey factor in the blood, which shows we couldn't have been descended from apes. I know I I don't think we ever were, personally, and that's why I think this whole thing is where we've seeded as a a species from an asteroid or were planted um just like in a zoo where there's multiple species in a zoo don't know will we ever know i don't know <clears throat> what about the um the matrix theory well i don't know i don't know i uh, um <clears throat> Or that we're, we're living in some kind of simulation. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, it's a lot it's of prominent scientists. In, yeah, it could be. A lot of prominent scientists believe that we're li potentially living in some kind of simulation. Um, I know Elon Musk believes that as well. Uh, I think like when you look extent. at the possibilities, like that's the most thing that like, they worked out that the most likely mm -hmm. is that obviously we can do it now. Yeah. We could design these these things to, and then obviously artificial intelligence mm -hmm. to the level that they think they're alive or or whatever yeah. and it would explain because obviously space is like you can't even fathom how big the like the observable universe is let alone mm -hmm. if that was then the question of what's beyond that what's how did it all start and like say the fact that someone made it in terms of a matrix computer system or whatever does make sense yeah and that even yeah. then lends itself to religion like there was a creator Mm -hmm. and it's just not the exact belief not exactly the same as what all the different religions have but it is we, it was a creator and that it's just not what we how we think it is yeah so there's there's another question i think we've i think we have covered it off before that uh in the bible okay trudy says our neg people tend to be more spiritually aware uh i know you are trudy um Trudy, um, in a paranormal group with Trudy. Um, and I know she's more spiritually aware than I certainly am. And I'm a positive blood just to, just to confirm that. But, um, 
yeah, it it would be interesting to to look into that a bit bit more deeply because I only know <clears throat> literally what we've talked about tonight, and I knew it was it was special blood. Um, so it could be could be an interesting thing. Ian says, uh, "Do you think the use of hallucinogenic drugs through the mind's eye filter allows you to see more of what entities share our world, like the shamans and medicine doctors?" I don't know much about it. I'll be completely honest. Um, I know people who have experienced um, things like psilocybin and uh, have used DMT <clears throat> um, experience a similar type of awareness. And they say it's very hard to describe what you see, except you see lots of shapes and uh, and all this kind of thing. Um, but I think I think when you relax your mind, however you choose to do it, I think that allows you to be more open to to what's out there. Meditation <clears throat> we we've discussed previously. Meditation uh, is done by a lot of people, and it allows them to to sort of open up to the spirit world or open up to different planes of existence. Um, so I think hallucinogenic drugs can allow people to get there faster and probably deeper than having to, to do it for that long. But I have heard that a lot of people say hallucinogenic drugs allow you to see more clearly. Um, but that that's all I really know about it. I'll be honest with you. Not, yeah, same. I'm not. It's not a right subject here. matter. I've I've really gone down, but I have heard about it. But... So I've I've known people that have started it as a way of like relaxing, opening mm -hmm. their minds up, and as a a complement to um, meditation. And they've really spoke greatly of how it helps them open up, and like I say, see more clearly. Mm -hmm. But then the same person two years later it's like actually doesn't do it anymore because they now don't believe it works and they, okay. they, they did believe it was just messing with the with the brain basically so uh, again yeah i don't know um, i don't know unless yeah. you, ex you have to ex maybe you have to experience it um yourself i know like we've talked about that they use experiments on uh soldiers to mm -hmm. test the effects of like lsd and other mind altering drugs as, to use them as a weapon uh in yeah. war um so yeah i i don't know uh trudy the church closes your third eye when they christen you they say the hallucinogenic drugs can reopen and activate the penal gland okay oh, i am um... penal gland was something else <laughs> <Completely. laughs> oh ash we didn't need to go there on a friday <laughs> but yeah i've um yeah, I've not heard about it closing your third eye when they christen you. Uh, it might explain the fact that I'm quite closed off. I was christened uh, all those years ago. Um, but yeah, no, it, I think um, it'd be something to to look into a bit more because it seems that people are interested in hallucinogenic drugs and the, the effect they can have on opening your your mind. Even Mike, question. thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks. Uh, definitely. Okay. Simulation Let's have a look at that one. Definitely, because this is something that I think, like say, is worth um, looking into. It. Well, like, like say, some scientists do believe it's the most likely explanation, and we probably, like say, we probably never know mm -hmm. what it is. Have you read um, Flatland? A book called Flatland. I read it years yeah. ago. My uncle gave me a copy when I was first getting into this when I was like 12 or something. It's called Flatland, uh, A Romance of Many Dimensions. And okay. it's like, it's, it is a fiction book. It's like, <laughs> it, it's, it's quite hard to explain. It's a book, but it, it, it tries to explain the different dimensions in like simple terms. So it okay. starts off, it's the first dimension. And basically, it's characters. But like when they're in the first dimension, they're just a dot. They can only see a dot. That's like what the characters are. It's like yeah. a love story type. Uh, but then, they, then they, like, he progresses to the second dimension. And you can see like it's basically a line now, not a dot. But it's now two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, but like, but the people, and the person in the second dimension can see the person in the first dimension. 
but the person in the first dimension can't see the second dimension okay. shapes. And like then the third dimensions, the like shapes, triangles, squares, and they can see the first and second dimensions, but the first and second dimensions can't see the third okay, dimension. Got you. Yeah, and obviously it goes up to them. Like how we can only see what three or four dimensions, mm-hmm. and it's like theory that there's unlimited dimensions, and they can see yours, but we can't see them. Okay, and so that's what that, that book. It's, it's only it's a really thin like book, but um, it's quite good. It's quite it, like explain simply like how dimensions work and how they can be. Obviously, like everything around us, but we just can't see it because we can't see in that dimension. Mm-hmm. And that's when I always like going back to interdimensional like aliens ufos bigfoot uh, yeah. interdimensional and they can um take advantage and move from dimensions to man- dimension whereas we can't because we we're not on that level or on that plane okay. uh, Charmaine, what do you think about crop circles that you <laughs> i know you're a big fan of this one uh greg i let you uh talk about this so so crop circles uh yeah, so I've I've been and found a few that have been put out by me. I live out in Oxfordshire, West Oxfordshire, and very close to the Wiltshire border. Uh, <clears throat> Wiltshire seems to be one of the main sort of counties that has this kind of phenomena. Uh, I'm renowned for it, whether that be um, human made or otherwise. And but I've been to a couple whereby I I cannot see how it's just bent crops. Um, when a crop bends, it usually fractures and breaks. Um, the one that I've seen, I've got some photos. I'll have to find those out. Um, that the 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 crop itself has actually bent over, not broken, but it's it's almost like it's been heated because there's like a nodule of. So it's round nodule at the point where the crop has bent over as though it's actually been forced down and heated. Um, very strange, very strange. Um, none of the crops were broken. It was in a perfect circular pattern, like a classic one. Um, but then I've been in one that's the shape of a jellyfish. It's like 200 meter jellyfish. Amazing sort of structure so my thoughts on crop circles are some of them are definitely man-made i think um some of the designs are a bit too wacky to be anything other than humans personally but there are some and i i think the more basic ones are the ones that potentially are made by something there we go there's a jellyfish one so this was some time ago this was just out the back of um white horse hill uh in oxfordshire um and yeah the, so that big picture the where it says bizarre revival of crop circles so i i stood in the sort of top bit of the head of the jellyfish and the thing was huge you couldn't see it from the ground till you sort of walked into it um again some of it i think is probably man-made but some of the simple ones in my opinion i i the way the crops have been sort of folded over they, they don't appear to have been damaged they're not snapped uh, and when i walked into that particular one i'm not someone who normally picks up on sort of paranormal stuff to be fair but i definitely felt a sense of weirdness when i got into that crop circle um so I, jury's out for me i know there's definitely a lot of fakers out there and a lot of farmers do not like crop circles because uh, it, it ruins everything for them. But I'm jealous that um, you've been inside one. You don't get any up here in the north. <laughs> uh, I need to come down during crop circle season. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so definitely. Around, yeah, but... as I say, in <laughs> Wiltshire, uh, we're just on the border of Wiltshire. Um, that's where they tend to be. Um, but I, I yeah, I. I don't know if I've, I'll have to try and some, find some photos and put them up on our page, but uh, there we go. The, the nodes are microwaved. Yeah, that's the exact type of thing that if you look at, um, I don't know if you can search Ash for uh, crops, sort of 
uh, crop circle nodes, I think it'll be. Oh, this might, uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> those nodes, yeah, so in the middle, sort of just towards the, that middle top one, just gone down the, if you go down a bit, so that right in the middle now, oh. yeah, have a look at that. So that is what I've seen. But the actual angle was at a right angle. So the crop was, the bottom bit was the bottom of the crop. And the node was there. And then it was at a right angle across the floor. So it was only a short bit. And then it was essentially folded over crop like that. But that node was, was there. And it suggested that it's high heat has done it. Which yeah. suggests to me, someone who's not very technical or scientific, that it must have been um, heated somehow. And it wouldn't just be a, a piece of wooden board that somebody's just gone round overnight in a circle with a bit of string, uh, which a lot of them are. But yeah, so it, it, I'm interested in other people's thoughts on what they think crop circles are. Charmaine, what do you think they might be? Uh, another book recommendation from Ian. Mm. Uh, oh, well, the teachings of Don Juan. Uh, again, using the powers of whatever peel, 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 um, don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> open new realms of the world and how to use astral, astral projection is another one again, where it's about being able to control like the more spiritual side of of life and the, the obviously with the um, everything's connected, everything's conscious. And we can connect with via meditation and things. Then, like with the um, what's it called? The, the Americans spent millions mm -hmm. researching the um, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called, but the like with remote viewing. Remote viewing. That's the one. Mm -hmm. That's the one to like mm -hmm. into Russia or whatever. And they spent they spent millions like researching mm -hmm. for years and yep. years. So yep. they researched it for years, and so that says that there must be something in it. If they not like they did one uh, trial and spent some money, they did it for years and years, spending millions of dollars carrying on this research. So there's, they must they must know that there's something in it to keep spending that sort yeah. of money. Because there's a film, The Men That Stare at Goats, with George Clooney, and that's based on some of the yeah. uh, alternative sort of methods of remote viewing, mind control, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, decent film that. Ah, yeah, Ian. Crop circles. There is a famous video of someone who filmed a crop circle being formed by lights. It was um I've seen it. To be honest with you, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was released. Uh it come out before, but it then was released again by the same guy, and I can't think of his name. He was the guy that released the um, alien autopsy video. I can't think of his name. Um, and I'm pretty sure it came out that that was a faked video. I, can't, I don't know if I can find the video. It's a very famous clip and it's two orbs of light spinning around like that, if I remember rightly. And then these series of uh, crop circles appear. I think it was, I think it was pro not proven to be fake, but I think it was it looks a bit too good to be true. Yeah. And sometimes when it's too good to be true, it tends to be. Um, but I have seen the video that you want about in, and I'm pretty sure it looks too good. Talking of uh, too good to be true, that's what we can say about the last week's news or the, the Pentagon claims it's got UFO mm. crash wreckage and UFO debris and it's literally all over mainstream media. I've and seen you've been quite active on I have been social active. media, <laughs> replying to people about that. <laughs> it doesn't say anywhere that it's got UFO debris, not in one single bit. It's the fact that they didn't say it, that people have jumped on the fact that they have got it. I it's just 
like read it's like literally the, the, the actual FOI response there's like two pages not the report but the actual response it it says there what the report is and what it isn't we don't say what it isn't because it doesn't mention any, anything and then it, it's like i saw it like last tuesday or wednesday and then by the saturday it was all over mainstream media that the pentagon admits it's got ufo records and they yeah. and then i even saw one it's from a i think it's a french site he's in french so we had to like translate the page but it was like someone quoting the pentagon saying they have alien evidence of alien I, how's it jump? It's like Chinese whispers. Like it's like that. That's now alien confirmed alien craft. It's like how are you even getting to this from that feeling of information response? Yeah, yeah but for that died down a bit now. I think people realise that there's they didn't say anything. Uh, but as as you know, Ash, uh, it doesn't matter what you uh, what you tell people, people will believe. Don't they? Yeah, and they believe headlines. They do, they do. We um, put up a picture across both your page, the UFO and identify, UFO identified, and our paranormal podcast page uh, of a picture of a plane that was taken with a three second exposure time on a camera over London, and the across both pages, the photograph has been has reached like a hundred thousand people, and there's been thousands of people commenting on it and. We've even said that we know what it is. We've all publicly said on the comments that it's a plane. Um, people believe that what they want to believe. I've had a lot of people uh, accusing me of faking stuff. I've put up a picture that I took of a plane with a 15 second time lapse, and I was called a fake because um, I couldn't prove where I lived. Um, so people believe what they want to believe. I think that's the I think even with the evidence right in front of their face. Yeah, it's like that F FOIA. So I'd be like, no, they didn't admit anything. And the people of England prove it. Prove it. Like, one, it's hard to prove negative. But two, mm -hmm. read the response. <laughs> like, it's there. Read the actual response yourself. And you'll see I'm, yeah. not, like, I'm not a debunker. Yeah. It's just this guy, this Anthony Bragalia, who's you know in the past for doing, like, sort of exaggerating the truth a little bit. Mm -hmm. With his uh, research and stuff, we had some, some good stuff. But again, like with this, it's he said it's they've admitted they've got UFO crash debris, mm -hmm. and they, they, they didn't mention anything of the sort. And then obviously the media's run with it, and he went viral. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Glenn would like to know what your thoughts on deep sea alien life and the possibility of thereof. So we have, my understanding is that we have only managed to explore 5% of the sea. The Ariana Trench, etc., is miles deep. And we know hardly anything about the, the bottom of the ocean. <clears throat> and like that, that earlier bit where we, they found this strange life form in Antarctica. I'm massively open to the possibility there's some weird stuff down there. The, uh, the, the first people to see a, um, octopuses or octopi or whatever they call, call the multiples. That's some weird shit. Octopus are weird. So to think that's a, that's, that's essentially a life form that we've, we've seen. I dread to think what's that. That's why I hate going in the sea anyway. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I'm definitely open to the possibility of deep sea alien life. There, it's interesting you should say that as well, Glenn, because um, we've spoken to a few people uh, and they've seen UFOs coming from the sea. The USOs, I think they're they're called. Yeah, it's, it's become quite popular mm -hmm. the last couple of years with lots of yeah. reports of either coming out of or going into. Mm -hmm. water and not even like making a splash not slowing down just literally keeping the same trajectory and just into the water and gone mm -hmm. all yeah. out of the water just as fast without any like apparent slow down from as you would usually jump in water you get the the slow down mm -hmm. but if these like what they call trans medium uh, crafts or whatever they are mm -hmm. you just come out and go into the water just at, at speed which is obviously to, 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 to public knowledge, there's nothing that can 
that can do that, but there's videos of this and uh, the uh, the I don't know how to pronounce the name. It's is it Puerto, Puerto Rico somewhere or Argentina somewhere in, in South America? The Power Daily, yeah. Um, oh. uh, UFO incident that's took near one of the, the uh, airports, and that shown the light or an object through. I think it's through flare and traveling at mad speeds, making mad movements into the water, out of the water, splits mm. in two. And there's been quite a lot written about that one. There's um, Metabunk did a big article on it, um, and they came to the conclusion that it was a balloons, like from like wedding balloons. And that's why I split in two, because it was like two different balloons, and it's through winds and stuff. And the um, when you look at through things through infrared, it looks different to how it actually looks Yeah, uh, in real life. Well, then like the... Uh, the Coalition, UAP coalition, scientific coalition, whatever it's called, they they got like a hundred page report on this sighting, and they they say they don't know what it is. It's it does all this stuff. They say it's not a balloon. They've mm-hmm. done all these studies into it. So that's an interesting one to uh, to look into. Yeah, so, but- yeah, so going back to your your question, I think um, deep sea alien life is an absolute possibility. We know more about the surface of the moon, I think, than the 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 bottom of the ocean so the fact that we can't get down there creates a massive problem for us because um atmospheric pressure is horrendous you only get i think you go down 10 meters and you double the atmospheric pressure so you can imagine going down miles and it's almost impossible to see so anything that wants to hide is a good place to go so i i think yes definitely they're there's more stuff to find down there, and I think we will find it as the years go on. But and a similar question from Charmaine. So this is kind of on the same topic, but a different approach. Mm-hmm. Is it uh, Antarctica being a UFO base? So not in terms of like alien creatures down there, but is there an actual base in Antarctica? Because I know there's been quite a lot of um, quite a lot of YouTube videos and pictures from Google Earth showing random things they can't really say it's anything other than like pixels being pixelated mm-hmm. um what do you think there could be and that's some reports of things being seen coming out of like, again coming out of the water in antarctica so you think there could be a, a base yeah who knows but then so to throw this on a slight different tangent if there is a flat earth there is no antarctic because it's just one long, one long ice wall. Do you believe in but, flat Earth, Greg? No, no, I don't. Just wanted to ask that one. Day. <laughs> That's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Especially if you watch, I think it's called Over the Rim or Above the Rim or something. Oh, it's on Netflix. It's about flat Earth. And this guy, by doing an experiment to prove flat Earth, he actually proves that the Earth is round. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Which is quite funny. But they also say that Antarctica is a no-fly zone as well, isn't it? Not allowed to fly over it. <clears throat> I'm pretty know. sure. I think so. so what's your thoughts on Hollow Earth? Wow. Again, a similar yeah, hiding so, place, I guess, but possibly. It is because, um, again, like going down in the water, I think um, the, the atmospheric pressure and heat as you go down the further you go down, the hotter it gets. Um, and I think the furthest we've ever been down is something like six kilometers into the Earth's crust. I was actually reading about that this morning, <clears throat> weirdly. And um, I don't know. I don't know about Hollow Earth. It's entirely plausible, I suppose. It's, I don't know. What do you think, Ash? Well, it just reminds me of some doc- couple of Doctor Who episodes where they're drilling a hole and there's... Um... It's a Matt Smith episode, and the, the, they come across an underground base with the, I um, can't remember the name of the, the species in the show, but reptilian type. It was a reptilian type um, creatures that were living in this, in this base underground sea. Mm. And they were there originally, it was their planet. We sort of took it from them and they were hiding on the ground. And all the, all the aliens were like, Basing sleep 
like asleep for that many thousands of years it's been they've been under underground but yeah. but yeah in terms of it i don't know it's it's very thick the earth like i say there's like miles of layers of different types of rock and obviously it's hard you got all the molten lava that formed the volcanoes and the undersea underground lava lakes and stuff like that so yeah i don't know really i, I don't know I don't, some of these things like you said before about trying to prove a negative or it's it's difficult because there's no proof of hollow earth but there's no proof of no hollow earth if that makes sense so my mind although i'm pretty skeptical about a lot of stuff i like to think that i'm open-minded to discuss stuff so if anybody's got viewpoints and they want to come on and and have a chat yep we can we can line that up and the next time we go live happy to have people on to discuss it further it's um it's definitely some interesting topics mars uh Oh, the, another thing we were talking you were talking about interdimensional beings um it's almost like an ep- episode of info wars uh <laughs> i've thought about parallel universes <clears throat> and again the scientists are all on about parallel universes and i along with the paranormal stuff that i do we use um, a spirit box um which allows us or allows the the white noise between the the stations to act as like a a conduit for spirits to talk now i've been thinking about this and i wonder if it's not actually spirits a lot of the time that are speaking uh, and trying to communicate that that white noise actually shows some kind of um connection to a parallel universe so this is why it could also be some of the the ghosts that people see so we, we've interviewed somebody who saw um some roman soldiers walking through his living room um and not not ex- even seeing that he was there maybe that's there's some kind of shift and yeah. th- this guy's had some weird weird shit happen on his place but could it be that sometimes these portals open up and it's not actually an alien world we're seeing, it's actually Earth, but a different Earth. And that's why some people, um, I know on Skinwalker Ranch, there, a portal opened up and there was this hole opened and they saw what appeared to be like this Indian, uh, like American Indian chief standing the other side, just sort of waving no communication between the two but he could obviously see see through and i just yeah. wonder if that's some kind of portal to to another earth uh, and maybe these aliens ufos could have come like interdimensional but they could have actually come from into like a different universe or like a different earth and such i don't know <clears throat> could be could be. I think, it's, I think it's all, a lot of this is like say all comes down to belief, mm-hmm. and you can't prove either way. Mm-hmm. This nothing that comes down to what you believe, what your mm-hmm. experiences are, and like like what we do with with your by the UFOs, what you do with paranormal, mm-hmm. what we do with Bigfoot. It's just investigate it, research it, have your own beliefs, and mm-hmm. we'll find and out. I think... if, if we get there, we find out. Yeah, and I think. Um... Like when we when we're doing the podcasts and we don't really make any kind of judgment, we just present the stuff that we're talking about, and it's it's up to what whatever whatever you believe. Yeah. Um, and who am I to say that aliens don't exist? I don't know. They might well do. They might not do. It's just Definitely. whatever you you care and choose to believe. Um, but I do feel that. The internet is a bit of a wild west of places. So if you put a theory out there, you have to be prepared for people to come at you with their version of what they believe. Um, And some people are absolute keyboard warriors 
for for want of a better phrase but yeah definitely uh, i'll choose a different word but yeah <laughs> i've seen you put different words as well <laughs> no, no filters <laughs> but yeah no well, that's been a good chat tonight yeah definitely thanks everyone for just hanging out with us chatting asking questions first time we've done it we just thought because like i say we had other plans and that mm. fell through with uh, another another guest so if we're here let's just jump on go live yeah. and just see if anyone <laughs> just pops along and yeah yeah so it's been it's been fun been some good questions for people and like ian's just put agree if you parallel parallel universe theory sometimes we can see them and hear them no reason why other parallel universes sometimes see us and we're unaware of them absolutely i um definitely have a shift towards that and some of the paranormal stuff like I say, the paranormal stuff that I do, some some aspects of that I do think could be linked that way. I don't. Again, I have no proof of that. It's just what I, what I think. I think it's all about the journey. Yeah, it is. It is. Cool. Yeah, don't forget to uh, check out our website. Yep. We've got to do the, do the socials, do that pursuit of the paranormal. You can listen to all our episodes. Mm-hmm. The next episode out on Tuesday will be yeah. your stories. We've got a a special episode where listeners to the show have sent us their UFO stories, their paranormal stories. I'm going to be playing them as part of next episode. So that's out on Tuesday. Yeah, available on our website and wherever you listen to your podcasts. And yeah. we've got a mailing list. If you go to the website, sign up to the mailing list, put your email in, and only be once a week maximum. You get an email with a bit of latest news, bit of topics, and uh, a link to the latest episodes make sure you sign up and follow us on social media yeah yeah exciting times we like ash said we're we're trying to engage with everybody as much as possible so if, if people have questions stories fire them over to us uh, we might get you on a live stream or if you if you're not that brave we can we can talk to you via phone skype zoom teams we've we've done them all and yeah we'd we'd love to hear your stories as i say we we don't make any kind of judgment on what you're saying we just Tell present it, it. it yeah we present it so yeah come and join us cheers guys good night good night pursuit of the paranormal with ash and greg